What's up, fight fans? Welcome back to Sports Key to MMA News. Jake Paul persists with the offer to fight this UFC star. Nurmagomedov's coach believes that a prime McGregor is a tough outing for anyone in the lightweight division. Adesanya gives credit to the corner of Cannoneer. A member of Nate Diaz's crew tried to fight O'Malley? A tattoo artist takes a deeper look as to why Sean O'Malley has tattoos. Find out what he said on this episode of Sports Key to MMA News. From screaming f*** Dana White on a diss track to demanding that the UFC head bring him into the fold, the turbulent relationship between YouTube sensation and UFC head continues to evolve in 2022. It's no surprise that the duo have nothing good to say about one another, but wait, something has caused a major shift in White's approach. Not long ago, the UFC boss suggested Nate Diaz should probably fight Jake Paul next. This could either be a super fight or a barroom brawl. Either way, fans would love to tune in to see Nate Diaz take on Jake Paul. On the flip side, the problem child continues to call out Stockton's own, hoping to become Nate's last fight in the UFC or at least on this contract. Jake Paul spoke about his recent call out in the MMA Hour hosted by Ariel Helwani. Paul was asked if the UFC had contacted him, to which he responded, There wasn't. There wasn't, you know. The, the ball is in Dana's court. I've said that I will fight Nate Diaz in the UFC for free. All Dana White has to do is raise the fight am- fighter minimum from $12,000 to $50,000 and give the fighters long-term health care. And I'll fight Nate Diaz for free as his last fight in the UFC contract. This may seem a little ridiculous, but it's a pretty sweet deal for everyone involved. Dana gets to put on another huge event, Nate Diaz can finally finish his contract and the UFC fighters across the board will benefit. Jake Paul has been a mouthpiece for fighter pay for the better part of a year. Dana usually shrugs him off because he's Jake Paul. But the younger Paul brother is not saying anything that the UFC hasn't already been scrutinized for in the past. Everyone would agree that fighters deserve a better base pay and some better benefits for the shows they put on and the sacrifices they make. How do you think Jake would do against Nate Diaz in an MMA fight? Has Conor McGregor changed for the worse? Many people have speculated that after making all the money he could ask for, he's no longer as hungry as he once was when he was tearing through the featherweight ranks. Whether this is true or false, McGregor still has the desire to compete. Since making history in 2016 and becoming the first ever simultaneous two-division champion, Conor McGregor has gone one and three with all three losses coming by way of stoppage. Javier Mendez, founder and head coach of the American Kickboxing Academy, where Nurmagomedov trains, went in the States, spoke to Submission Radio and gave his thoughts on how the former lightweight champion would do against Charles Oliveira. Mendez said, I think, uh, you know, the old Connor, you know, gives anybody, uh, you know, challenges. But uh, the new Connor uh, that, that I've seen within the last three fights, no. No, I don't. I don't see him. I don't see him doing very much to Charles, the, the the new guy, not the old guy. The old guy, yeah, 100%. The beautiful thing about this situation is that we may not have to rely purely on speculation. Charles Oliveira has made it clear that if he could have things his way, he'd be fighting the Notorious in his next bout. Though the elitist fans would be upset that another one of Javier's fighters, Islam Makhachev, would be overlooked, Meanwhile, if this fight materializes, then hardcore MMA fans could see Benil Dariush fight Islam Makhachev in a title eliminator bout. Let's act like you're 2014 McGregor, and the subscribe button is Charles Oliveira's face. So you know what to do. Hit it, please. And still, the middleweight king, Israel Adesanya, continues to dig his heels in at the top of the 185-pound mountain. Though his past UFC 276 main event performance failed to live up to expectations, it certainly won't be the most replayed fight of his career. It further proved that Stylebender is always ready and willing to take on the hottest challenges that the UFC can muster. In Adesanya's post-fight interview, he mentioned that he wasn't just excited to see himself versus Jared, but he was also excited for the coach versus coach battle happening in the backdrop, which featured his head coach, Eugene Behrman, and Jared's coach, John Crouch. Izzy credits Cannoneer's corner for their remarkable game plan and ability to adapt. In fact, he believes they're the reason the fight went all five rounds. In a sit-down interview posted on Adesanya's YouTube channel, Izzy said, Yeah, but I went to the body. Eventually, I stopped. I was like, why are you headhunting? Relax. But I was like, go to the body, go back to the legs, go back to the legs. And then everything else started opening up. But he was adjusting well. That's what I'll give his corner. I think it was his team. 
Like at one point, even they knew the back kick was coming because maybe the way I loaded it up or something on my, my I don't know, something I I, I don't want to say what they said, but oh, but it's like you know, yeah, good team. Though this fight may have been a bit anticlimactic, fans should expect fireworks or a Dagestani Adesanya in his next outing as he's lined up to take on former kickboxing rival and surging middleweight contender Alex Pereira. Do you think Adesanya vs Cannoneer was really that boring? Nate Diaz and crew involved in an out of the octagon altercation? One of the most highly anticipated matches of UFC 276 featured Sean O'Malley taking on his toughest test to date in Pedro Munoz. Though the fight was seemingly going in Sean's favor, an unintentional eye poke concluded the fight, resulting in a no contest. It's not a win, but hey, the after party produced more action for O'Malley. In a new episode of the Timbo Sugar Show, the titular Sugar and Tim Welch discussed a run in they had at the after party. Apparently, one of Nate Diaz's friends, who's reportedly very short in stature and in temperament, was held responsible for triggering the fight. Sean revisited the event during his podcast and said, Remember that little Nate's friend at the club? I forgot about dude. that until now. And now I don't even know who he is. Guy, but it, it was Nate's crew. But yeah. I saw Gilbert Melendez. Gilbert was faded. Just like, no, we're good, bro. And then Jake Shields came up to me. He's like, no, we're good, bro. Yeah. Like their whole crew was being so cool. Nate didn't really want to anything to do with me because I think that was his boy and his like Nate's Nate. Sean spoke a bit more on this saying Hi. one of Nate's buddies came up and said look it dude he, he was trying to do this to figure eight out he's just trying to oh create something. yeah which I get but yeah yeah that was weird because when I'm drunk I'm never in like a f you kind of mood ever yeah. and I like put me in there real quick I snapped out of it I liked seeing Gilbert and Jake Shields there and they were like give me skin and we were mutually like what's up let's go we're boys I, want, I wish we could have took some shots with them with that little f***ing weasel. Sorry, Sean. Maybe you'll all have a shot together at the next party. If you're liking the content so far, please leave a like on the video. Subscribe and hit that notification bell to make sure you never miss a future video. So what's the story behind that owl on O'Malley's chest? Is it covering up something dark, perhaps related to past trauma? Or does it just look really, really cool? A professional tattoo artist looked at Sugar's Inc. and offered some insight. YouTube channel Fight Front invited tattoo artist Clara Sinclair on to take a deeper look at the body art of some UFC fighters. When looking over O'Malley's pieces, she started with the iconic owl chess piece. Clara said, I think it's a cover up. So you can see that he used to have like lettering on under his collarbones and now it's a cover up. If you can see the lettering poking through, it's not a good thing. It needs a little bit more contrast in terms of light and dark. Babe, the owl needs a face because it's looking a little bit sad and lonely because I haven't coloured in the belly bit. So I don't know whether that's to like feel like an empty void in the soul, in life. Clara then broke from this existential ponder to compliment the cute little heart tattoo that Sean has under his eye. Whether these tattoos are intended to fill a void or are just there because we can all agree that it suits Sean's overall vibe. Clara said so herself and she's the expert. Have you considered getting a face tattoo also? Let us know what you would get down below. That about does it for Sports Keter MMA News. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and follow us on our social media platforms. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. Here are some comments from the previous videos. Yes, he's scared. McGregor must be laid to rest because now he'll only be a shadow of the man he was. If you like this video, please like, comment, and share. Your comments could be featured in the next Sports Keter MMA News video. We always deliver daily content, so make sure you subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss anything going on in the MMA world. For updates, quotes, and exclusive interviews from all your favorite fighters, follow Sports Key to MMA on Twitter and Instagram. Thanks for tuning in.